Hey everybody, hope you're enjoying this Christmas season, slowing down, listening to good old Christmas music that just lifts your spirits. You know, I heard a saying one time, and Lord Jesus, help those in Kentucky, help those suffering around the world. We don't ever want to forget there are other people who are just really hurting at this time. Help us to remember to pray for them, lift them up, and let us not be complain, but be thankful. So help them, Lord. Help us. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. I know, so easy to get caught up in your own little world, but think of others. Um, anyway, we are continuing with Mary, but I love somebody said it in a book. I don't know who said it, but it just, wow, resonates with me when it seems least like Christmas due to sadness, heartbreak, and loss. That's when it's most like Christmas. And that's just the coolest thought. That's why Jesus came. Why did Jesus come? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, let the oppressed go free and break every yoke. Luke chapter four. That's why Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. He came to save us. How cool is that? So when it seems least like Christmas, again, due to sadness, that's when it's most like Christmas. That's when he came. That's the story of the gospel. Jesus came to save us from our sin. Give us eternal life. How amazing is that? But um, again, I don't know if you noticed all the Mary study has all the P's in it. Everything starts with P. The first one we talked about was problem Mary and mankind needed a savior so there was a problem and then Mary was poor you know she didn't have a lot she was just a poor handmaid a waitress of the Lord and then God prepared her God always prepares you for whatever he calls you to do and then it's a privilege serving the Lord I love the you know story of, of, of um, Princess Diana and any princess can't do anything you wear jeans have a cell phone go out in public by yourself chew gum and we focus on that, right? How silly is that? They could buy a whole tea company. They could uh, buy the whole store, right? They're, they're not suffering by any means, but we seem to focus on that. The enemy gets us every time. I know I've talked, said this in my videos many times, how Eve lived in the perfect life, better homes and gardens. She was probably gorgeous. She had no competition. God was her in-law. She had no laundry. She had no children. We love our children, but you know what I'm saying? No issues with children. Um, Adam was probably gorgeous. They had the perfect life. They walked with God every day. Okay, how great of a life is that? But then the enemy comes along and says, oh, God is holding out on you, Eve. And she should have said, what do you mean he's holding out on me? See this whole vast universe and, and paradise? It's all mine. Oh, but you can't have that one tree. She should have said, get out of here. Are you kidding me? I have a million trees. I don't really care about that one tree. But where do we see Eve? At that one tree. Okay? And when we first get mad at Eve, the Lord just says, and that would be you too. Okay? You would do the same thing. Because sometimes we're shocked at people in the Bible. Oh, we would do the same thing. So God is holding out on you, Eve. He whispers in our ear. He's such a liar. How we have to remember that. He's a liar. That's what he does. Is he lying to you today? Is there something he's whispering in your ear? He's a liar. Open your Bible and sp and speak truth into your life. The word of God is quick and sharp, um, quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, able to cut between what's a lie and what's truth. Okay. That's in Hebrews chapter four. Word of God is quick and power and sharper than a two-edged sword. Okay. But again, God is not holding out on, if he gave us Jesus, oh my goodness, everything else is le lesser. Okay, he gave us Jesus, what we have the, we have the best gift ever. Okay, you ever get the best, I don't know what, what you would consider, I get the best gift ever, I'll never need anything again. No, of course, every Christmas we need something. And we forgot, it's so funny, you ever think about, what did you get last Christmas? I don't even remember, do you remember? <laughs> we really don't remember. We just remember the love. We just remember the times we have together. Something in Charles Dickens' uh, book, A Christmas Carol. You've got to hear that, listen to that, get it, read it, whatever. But it talks about when the, when the presents are all gone, when the food is all gone, kids in 20 years down the road will not remember all that stuff, but they will remember the love of the parents. So what's important? Anyway, um, I love this poem. I, there's, I don't know who wrote it. The Larger Life, it's called. The best in life is often missed, though very strange it be. We lose so much of heaven's good things because we fail to see. Our Father's table is replete with all one's soul may need. Yet hungry hearts exist on husks. 
because they do not heed. Imagine just eating the husk and not the corn because we, they do not heed or listen. Few people ever comprehend half life's pleasure sweet. They taste a few and all the rest are trampled neath their feet. O oh soul, accept your heritage. Enjoy God's blessings true and live the larger life in him as he would have you do. Wow. Don't miss anything. God's table is full of everything you need. Read Psalms 23. You've got every single thing you need, physically, mentally, emotionally. God takes care of everything you need. We don't want to miss his blessings. We really don't want to miss his blessings. And in Pilgrim's Progress, again, I've said this in, in many of my videos, I love the answer that little Pilgrim gives to Apollyon when he's trying to bribe him to come back to the city of destruction. Now that should have been a clue right there. Hello, we're so ignorant sometimes. Satan just, he is subtle. He does, um, nobody falls for, a, for a, a lie unless it's painted up really nice, you know, a facade, something false. Satan always, Satan would be in marketing, wouldn't he? He paints sin and something dark and ugly. He paints the sin just so beautiful and then we're trapped. But anyway, Apollyon wants to get Christian back, a pilgrim back to the city of destruction. And he says, I'll pay you well. <laughs> okay. But I love his answer. Oh my goodness. It is so, so, so great. And if you've never read Pilgrim's Progress, you've got to read Pilgrim's Progress. The best book ever. Second in um, uh, to the Bible in popularity. Okay. He says, um, I'll pay you well. All right. The city of, oh, here we go. His answer is, I find his service easier his wages higher, his servants kinder, his government fairer. That's for sure. His company sweeter, his country lovelier, and I'll follow him wherever he goes. Is that just so cool? Let me read that again. I find his service easier. It's very hard to serve your flesh. Your flesh is a hard driving task master. Follow the spirit. The Spirit gives you everything you need, everything you need to follow the Lord. So I find his service easier. It's easy to be a Christian when Jesus is in you. Um, his wages higher, his servants kinder, his government fairer, nothing but lies and deceit in the world, his sweet company sweeter, his country lovelier, and I'll follow him wherever he goes. Oh, I love that. Okay, we just finished. It was a privilege, just a privilege to serve the Lord. Okay. The next one is a purpose. Mary had a purpose. God called Mary for a purpose. And you know what? He calls you and I for a purpose. He really does. You and I both have a purpose for the kingdom of God. It's why we're here. Otherwise, you'd be in heaven already. Um, but we don't, again, realize how much it costs her comfort, her reputation. People probably whispered behind her back the rest of her life. Oh, there's that harlot they called her in many history books a historian uh, josephus just mary did not have a good reputation because who believed that she was a child of the holy spirit really how does that happen that's a, that's that can't happen so she cost her her lot cost her her reputation her comfort not to mention uh, joseph too and sometimes it does you know cost us but again the blessings outweigh the trials um anyway they would stone you to death if you were pregnant outside of wedlock so anyhow but mary laid down her life okay mary laid down her life i mean we just have to think of the scenario of today can you imagine a girl in our youth group that would show up expecting or pregnant and, oh what, what happened you know and she'd say oh i'm pregnant by the holy spirit i don't know what what would happen we would just think uh, wow you're, you're crazy or you're in sin or whatever but again it cost her a lot but God had a purpose for Mary, an eternal purpose, just like he does for you and I. Depression, they say, is caused when having nothing to get up in the morning. You, get, you wake up and you're like, why am I here? Oh, another day. Same old, same old. Don't We get like that, don't we? Why am I here? There's no purpose. Without a vision, the people perish. But you know what? Just remember when you wake up in the morning, God has something for you to do. There is, again, depression is caused by purposelessness. Nothing to do, okay? And God has given something for you to do that only you can do. I love that. 
you know um a chain if you cut out your link of the chain the chain is broken you know sometimes we think there's nothing only i can do oh the church is so big all oh, they have all the people they need oh cut out your little link chain is broken okay you're important a little screw can derail a train all right so you are important god has a plan for you that only you can do i remember as a young teenager not walking with the lord very depressed and you know what sin is depressing you know that's i came to the lord through severe depression sin is depressing and um i'm not saying all depression is caused by sin but some of it is I, mine was for sure i wasn't walking with the lord and because uh, again sin pulls you apart piece by piece you know think a whole foods well, a whole life a together life when you come back to jesus but um, I remember somebody said to me at church, I walked into a church and I forget who it was, but somebody just looked at me and they, in my little mini skirt and they said, Jesus, God has such a plan for your life and it's going to be great. You have no idea what God has in store for you. And I was like, they're talking to me. I was looking around, talking to me. It was as if they gave me just like a, like a, like a, I don't want to say a happy pill. Pills don't make us happy, but you know what I'm saying? Just wow okay just all of a sudden i thought god has a plan for me oh my gosh god loves me god could use me it was really neat it just it turned my whole perspective around so god has a plan for you when you wake up in the morning just know that it's not going to just be the same old same old again without a vision the people perish that is proverbs 29 18 proverbs 29 18 and i think of esther 414 chosen for such a time as this oh my goodness I mean her life I don't think could be worse you know a slave taken as a slave um, probably saw her parents killed she's living with her uncle she's not in her homeland Esther's life was not at all pleasant I don't care if she's won the beauty contest and I really do believe they saw Jesus in her I really do believe that the reason why Esther was beautiful I mean again yeah a little makeup helps for sure <laughs> The bar needs painting, paint it. But I just believe the king's, so I don't care if she had all the four months of beauty treatment, whatever. I don't I don't care. If sin comes out of your mouth, you're going to be ugly, okay? But the, I think he saw Jesus in her. He saw God in her. He's like, I, I want her. I'm picking her. So, ladies, that's a beauty secret. And you guys, look for a woman who has Jesus gushing out of her life. Um, but again, for such a time as, as this, and she might have thought, oh, I, I can't do anything. My heart is broken. I'm... She should have been curled up in a fetal position from the tragedy in her life. She should have been utterly rendered useless or just, what can I do? I'm just one little person. That woman who went before the king, and it was death if you weren't called, to, you have to be called. You have to be invited. You can't just show up at the palace, even though she was the queen. It was death if you didn't, if you weren't called she just someone someone told her that she i love her answer if i perish i perish and i don't think she said oh my god if i perish i perish no i think she said if i perish i perish i've got to save my people she was bold she was she she knew the lord um i love her resolve and when we're depressed no you know really go to the lord what why are you depressed is it sin um this is silly one time my pastor's wife told me she goes if you're, if you're depressed get out and go for a walk um let me tell you something get it get fresh air get your endorphins going i have a trampoline i know lloyd will go oh, up there she goes she's out she's out on her trampoline she's depressed no no I, I love just getting outside as you can see it's freezing right now but i'm outside <laughs> get out get some fresh air get into the word pray know when it's a spiritual battle you ever did depressed and you go this is the enemy this is smells of the enemy you know but then there's times when hey you're maybe you just need some good food maybe you just need some rest maybe you need some exercise you know figure out what it is and again yes i have to go there i, I can't throw the baby out with the bath water i know god has given us antidepressants um i'm just so thankful the lord rescued me saved me I, I know I would definitely be and again I'm not knocking anybody that's on depression sometimes our body uh, medication sometimes our bodies need it but um and I still get depressed don't get me wrong just because I came to the Lord doesn't mean everybody I'm happy every day oh I have some dark dark times but I don't crash as I go down as far as I used to he always catches me you know, in the world, I would just, that I was down for the count, super depressed, can't get up. 
but the Lord catches me every time. So anyway, depression, you look to the Lord. God has everything under control. Um, oh, we don't really have time for this. Okay. Just, just to encourage your moms, Mary was a mom and your, your children are your most important ministry. Your children are your disciples. Oh my goodness. Let me just read you one last thing. Mary, did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Don't kids show us our flesh. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And when you kissed your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. Whoa, was that a thought? When you've kissed your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. Mary, did you know the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again, the lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? This sleeping child you're holding <clears throat> is the great I am, Mary, did you know? So everybody know God has a purpose and a plan for you and walk in that. That is your joy. That is your peace. And just put your, put your feet up, make some tea and listen to the Christmas carol, listen to some good hymns. But um, God willing, we will see you next week.